first Sunday after Trinity. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without thee. Grant us the help of thy grace, that in keeping thy commandments, we may please thee, both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Easter hymn 210, verse 1. The day of resurrection, earth tell it abroad. The Passover of gladness, Passover of God. From death to life eternal, from earth unto sky, our Christ hath brought us over the hymns of victory. This is attributed to John of Damascus in the 8th century. Turn our attention now to Suppression of Monasteries by Thomas Wright, Esquire. This was published in 1843 for the Camden Society. It's a long time ago, but we're paging down through here, 1843 and 44. It does slightly make that smaller. Is a list of people to whom who are on that society. We'll just notice as we're beginning that the suppression of monasteries was not just in England, but it happened in Denmark, Sweden, and Norway to get rid of meddlesome bishops and the power of Rome. I'm not sure what they did in Germany. Well, it starts in the middle of something here. Page six. It just starts right in the middle. So the early page. And the worst crimes laid to the charge of monks are but too fully verified by the long chain of historical evidence reaching without interruption from the 12th to the 16th centuries. Those who have studied in this interior history of this long period, the demoralizing effects of the popish system of confession and absolution, will find no difficulty in conceiving the facility with which the inmates of the monasteries at the time of their dissolution confessed to vices from the very name of which our imagination now recoils. These documents are of peculiar importance amid the religious disputes which at present agitate the world. This is a preface now. And I think that even the various lists of the confessions of the monks and nuns of several religious houses entitled Comperta and preserved in manuscript ought to be made public. The great cause of the Reformation has but been ill served by concealing the depravities of the system with which it which it overthrew. I will only add that I have done what I could under the circumstances to ascertain the dates of these letters and arrange them in chronological order. It was the custom at this period in dating letters to write the day of the month without the year which now gives rise to considerable difficulties. In the description in the Cottonian catalog, the dates of these letters are thrown into almost hopeless confusion. Table of content. Letter one, Edmund Abbott of York to Cardinal Wolsey, York, September 20, 1528. Suppression of the Priory of Romberg. Two, 
<coughs> Richard Bishop of Norwich to Cardinal Wolsey, Hoxney, January 12, 1528, concerning the election of Prior Butley. Three, William Barlow to the King, 1533, recantation of opinions expressed in his works. Four, commissioners at Bristol to Secretary Cromwell, Bristol, 1534, preaching of Latimer and Hubbardon in Bristol. Five, John Halsey to Cromwell, Bristol, May 2, 1534, same subject as proceeding. Set letter five, letter to Secretary Cromwell, 1534, about prophecies of Elizabeth Barton, the Holy Maid of Kent. Seven, the Prior of Christ Church Canterbury to Cromwell, 1533, his account of Elizabeth Barton. Eight, a petition of the monks of Canterbury to the king for pardon for those who'd been concerned in the affair of the maid of Kent. Nine, Roland Lee and Thomas Battle to Cromwell, Canterbury 10, December 1533. A commission in Kent to examine into the proceedings of the maid of Kent. 10 list of the nun's goods. 11, Cromwell to Bishop Fisher concerning the maid of Kent. 12, vision of John Darley, June 27. 13, letter of Thomas Dorset, London, March 13. Dr. Crookborn's vision of the Trinity and Virgin Mary. Lambert's examination at Lambeth for heresy. Jurisdiction of the Bishop of London. Bishop of Worcester's sermon at St. Paul's Cross. The King's proposition for an act of Parliament against idleness. 14. Battle to Cromwell, London, Ascension Day, 1534. Conference with the monks of the Charter House who refused to acknowledge the king's supremacy. 15, Richard Lee and Battle to Cromwell, Millsend, June 15, 1534, conference with the friars of Richmond on the same subject. Letter 16, Battle to Cromwell, London, July 28, 1534. Bishop Fisher's books against the king's new marriage. The nuns of Sion acknowledge the king's supremacy. 17. Dr. Layton to Cromwell. Sion, December 12, 1534. The nuns of Sion conduct conduct of the bishop, bishop the confessor. Many of the monks weary of their habit. 18, Battle to Cromwell, Sion, December 15, 17, 1534, Visitation of Sion. A.D. 1535, Richard Zuch to Cromwell, requests to have the Abbey of Staverdale restored as it was founded by his ancestors. 20, Sir Peter Dutton to Cromwell, Dutton. August 3, insurrection at Norton. The abbot and some others in custody. 21, the abbot of warden's reasons for resigning. 22, Margaret Vernon to Cromwell, desiring to surrender her monastery. 23, Dr. Legg or Dr. Lee, L-E-G-H to Cromwell, Laycock, August 20, requesting uniformity in the proceedings against the monasteries. And a weird, at, at 24, Dr. Layton to Cromwell, Bristol, Bartholomew's Day, release, rel, relies on maiden Bradley, dissolute behavior of the prior of that house. 
25, John Bartolo to Cromwell states that he and five others found the prior of the Crutched Friars in London in a, in a bed with a prostitute. Chapter 26, Thomas the first, or Thomas I, I should say, leg to Cromwell, Belvoir, September 1, scandalous life of the abbot of Riveau, who refused to acknowledge the jurisdiction of the visitors. John Fitz James to Cromwell, Redlick, September 2, the abbot of Glastonbury requests to be freed from four of the injunctions of the last visitation. 28, Dr. Legg to Cromwell. I'll just say Dr. Legg, it's L-E-G-H. I don't know how that's pronounced. We'll just pronounce it Dr. Legg. Wilton, September 3, recommending that the heads of the religious houses should not be allowed to go forth of their houses. Visitation of the universities of Oxford and Cambridge. 29, Jasper Philol to Cram Cromwell, London, September 5. Revenue of the Chap Charter House, London. Behavior of the monks. Instructions for the management of that house. 30, Dr. Leighton to Cromwell, Oxford, September 12, particulars of the visitation of the University of Oxford. 31, the Abbot of Ruley to Cromwell, offering 100 pounds to have his abbey pervert, preserved or converted into a college. Letters 32, Sir Thomas Audley to Cromwell, September 26, requesting him to spare a visitation of the nunnery of Barking until he can speak with him and various other matters. 33, Dr. Layton to Cromwell, informing him that he'd studied, suddenly entered the Abbey of Langdon and captured the abbot's concubine. 2034, William Barlow to Cromwell, states the violent opposition that he received in preaching the gospel in the Diocese of St. David's, ill treatment of other offending persons. 35, the prior of Bridlington to Cromwell, Bridlington or Bridlington, <coughs> October 23, with a present and stating that Sir Gilbert de Gaunt was a founder of his abbey and not the king. 36, Dr. Legg to Cromwell, Eli, November 1, many of the monks desire to be set at liberty from their way of living. 37, the commendator of Welbrecht to Cromwell, Welbrecht, November 2, death of the abbot of West Durham, election of a successor. 38, John App Rick to Cromwell, Bury, November 5, mismanagement of the abbot and disorderly living in the Abbey of Bury, relics of that house. 39, Richard Wharton to Cromwell, Bungay, November 7, the prior of Ingham has sold his abbey and lands to William Woodhouse contrary to his promise to Edward Calthorpe, whose ancestors founded the same and who desires now to have it. 40, the commoners in Kent to Cromwell, or the commissioners in Kent to Cromwell, Canterbury, November 16, surrender of Langdon, Dover, and Folkestone abbeys. 41, Christopher, Levin to Cromwell, informing him that the prior of Christ Church, Canterbury, had acted contrary to his oath and had conveyed away jewels and treasure out of the house and, according to report, murdered some of the monks. 42. 
Dr. Layton to Cromwell, Litchfield, visitation of monasteries southward from London, and lewd and riotous living of the monks, Chicksan, Harewold, St. Andrews in Northampton, Newark, and Southwark Colleges. 1536, letter 43, the Bishop of Lincoln to Cromwell, Walburn, January 10, election of Sir John Black Blackett to be prior of Newstead instead of Samford. 40, letter 44, Dr. Legg to Cromwell, York, January 13, states that he and Dr. Layton had visited the Archbishop of York. 45, Dr. Layton to Cromwell, York, January 13, corruptions in the monasteries in Yorkshire, Abbey of St. Mary at York. Letter 46, Battle of Cromwell, Ramsey, January 15, commendation of the abbot and convent of Ramsey, charter of King Edgar in their house, visitation of the Psaltery Abbey, inquires if he shall proceed to the unvisited houses in the Diocese of Lincoln. 47, Leighton and Legg to Cromwell, Richmond and Yorkshire, January 20, scandalous practices of the Abbot of Fountains, that one Marmaduke, a monk of the house, is a proper man to succeed him and will give 600 marks for the office, resignation of the Abbot of Whitby. 48, the Abbot of Faversham to Cromwell. Faversham, March 16, stating what he considers the duties of an abbot and that he is yet not so infirm so as to be unable to perform them. Also the services he has rendered that house and hoping he may be allowed to remain there. 49, the manner of dissolving the abbeys by King Henry VIII. 50, the prioress and nuns of Leybourne to Cromwell and treating to have their house preserved. 41, Sir Peter Edgecombe to Cromwell. Stating that his ancestors were founders of the priories of Totnes and Cornworthy and treating to have them spared. Lord Lawyer. March 25, entreating to have the priory of Boxgrave saved from the suppression as he had found thereof and many of the ancestors lie buried there, or if not, that it may be made a college of, and lastly, that he may have the temporalities thereof. 53, John Maurice to Cromwell, Boxgrave, March 21 reports that he and two others had dissolved the priory of Boxgrave according to their instructions and that Lord Lower had brought the goods. 44. Humphrey Stafford to Cromwell, Leatherwick, Palm Sunday, entreating that the priories of Fineshed and Worspring may be granted him when suppressed. The Archbishop of York to Cromwell, Cawood, April 23, informs him that he has given instructions to his archdeacons to warn all monasteries under 200 pounds per annum not to embezzle or alienate their goods. Praying also that the houses of St. Oswald and Hexham may not be suppressed and that he has given commandment that no preachers shall be allowed to preach novelties. 51, the prior of Cokesford to Cromwell, petition for a pension of 20 pounds per annum or more. 52, Richard Street to Cromwell, Litchfield, May 12, inventory of the goods and lands belonging to Calwich Abbey. Letter 58, what were we on? 58, 
The Commissaries of Northamptonshire to Sir R. Rich, Catesby, May 12, recommending that the nunnery of Catesby should not be suppressed. 49, or wait, 59, the prior of Bodman, Mr. Locke, Bodman, complaining that his canons refused to live according to the injunctions given by the bishop at his visitation. Fifth, 60, Richard Beerley to Cromwell, desiring to be dismissed from the monastery of Pershore on account of the disorderly life of the monks. 61, the abbot of Kenilworth to Cromwell. Kenilworth, June 17, petitions to have the temporal benefits arising from the priory of Broke. 62, George Gifford to Cromwell. He and the other commissioners had surveyed several religious houses in the counties of Stafford and Leicester. Brook, Bradley, Wolverton, Kirby, Beller, Woolstrope, Garandon, St. James, and Northampton. Gatsby, he entreats that Woolstrope Abbey may remain unsuppressed as it is a well-ordered house. 63. Richard Southwell to Cromwell. Sequestration of Walsingham Abbey. Discovery of implements of alchemy. The commissioners to Cromwell. Max Talk, July 28. In favor of the nunnery of Polesworth. Sir Thomas Elliot, Elliot to Cromwell, pleading his poverty and suing for some of the suppressed lands. Sir William Bassett to Cromwell with the images of St. Anne of Buxton and St. Maudwin of Burton upon Trent, which he had removed, and stating also that he had shut up the wells of Buxton. The commissioners to Cromwell reporting that they had visited the monastery of Bury St. Edmunds, where they had taken a large amount of gold, silver, and jewels. 68. The abbot and convent of Woburn to the king, submitting themselves and their goods to his majesty and praying that they may be allowed to continue there. 69, Richard Cromwell to Lord Cromwell, Ramsey, October 15. Visitation of Eli and Ramsey. 70, Bishop Latimer to Cromwell, recommending two monks and excusing his personal attendance in consequence of ill health. 71, Bishop Latimer to Cromwell, Hartlebury, December 13 thanking him for his goodness in promoting worthy men and entreating that the Priory of Great Malvern will remain unsuppressed. 72, John Smith to Francis Cave with coat, stating that the Prior of Lond had conveyed away much property of his house. 1537, letter 73, the abbot of Croyland to Cromwell, March 25, sends a present of fish and entreating his favor. 74, report of the surrender of Furness Abbey. 75, the Duke of Norfolk to Cromwell, Kenning Hall, April 12, election of the prior of Newbridge, 76, Dr. Layton to Cromwell, requesting that he and Dr. Legg may be commissioners to inquire into the state of monasteries in Northern England. 77, Sir Arthur Darcy to Cromwell, suppression of the Gerval Abbey, Abbey, the grounds of the finest in England for breeding of horses, visitation of Salay, his private affairs. 78, Thomas Tyrell to Cromwell, informing him that the vicar of Mendelssohn had brought home his wife and children, which great, gave great offense to the laity. 
Letter 79, John Foster to Cromwell, June 18, stating that he had sent away his wife, whom he had married, without knowing that it was contrary to the king's intentions. 80, Battle to Cromwell, London, June 14, reporting that the prior of the Charter House had resigned his house to the king and recommending the said prior to favor. 81, Francis Cave to Cromwell, Leicester, April, August 29, surrender of the Monastery of Leicester. 82, Richard Bell, Bellis to Cromwell, demolition of the monasteries of Jerval and Bridlington. <clears throat> 83, the commissioners of the North to Cromwell, Selby, December 8. Dissolution of the houses of Hampel, St. Oswald's, Pontrefract, Fountains, St. Mary's in York, Nun Appleton and Selby, Burton upon Trent, and St. Leonard's in York, altered. 84. Commissioners of the North to Cromwell, York, December 15. Dissolution of the houses of Warwick Scope, Monk Breton, St. Andrews at York, Byland, Revaux, Kirkham, and Ellerton, and the Friar Houses at Tickbill, Doncaster, Pontrefact, and the Friars of York. 1538, letter 85, the commissioners to Cromwell, Northampton, March 2, suppression of the monastery of St. Andrews, Northampton, with a list of pensions granted to the monks. 86, Robert Southwell to Cromwell, Northampton, March 3, suppression of the monastery of St. Andrew, Northampton, the Priory of Westacre, and Boxley Abbey. And here we will call it to an end. And we will do verse three of Easter Hymn 240 by John of Damascus, verse two. The hearts be pure from evil, that we may see aright the Lord in rays eternal of resurrection light, and listening to his accents may hear so calm and plain his own all hail and hearing may raise the victor's strain. Let us pray. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Godspeed.